Welcome back to Coffee in the Library. This is episode six. We are with Pastor Sivale here at the Evergreen Library at Kabwata Baptist Church. My name is Mwansa Mbewe, your host. Pastor Sivale, welcome. Thank you, Mwansa. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's great to be back. Mm. We have a great topic to discuss today. A question was sent in that uh, goes something along the lines of i feel or i think my boss hates me mm. the way i'm treated just makes me think and feel like my boss hates me has it out for me as a christian working in such an environment how do how, how do you respond how can we think of such a situation mm. if a boss is treating us with disdain or even straight out hatred mm. All right, um, that's that's a good question, and um, it's one that we need first of all to establish uh, whether the action of your bosses, your boss or your bosses, confirm whether they have a hate, personal hatred for you, or uh, generally, or is it specifically because of something you have done? And uh, if that is established. And then uh, obviously then it's easy for us to look at the, at some at some solutions now i want to think of um, hatred to a boss who hates me as uh, one who who is, who who one has like you said maybe there's a personal hatred and it shows in the actions that the boss gives uh, brings out yeah or maybe is excessively critical. Yeah. Or maybe at times is impatient with you. Uh, he doesn't appreciate. Yeah. You feel like he does micromanage things yeah. or anything you do. There's there's somehow no approval. Yeah. There's of, always a problem. There's always a work. problem that your yeah. boss finds with you. Yeah. And if that is established, that that's the case. Then, as a Christian, how do you respond? Yeah. Now, before I get the responses, firstly, when we when we when we begin work, we 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 go there to do something specific. Yeah. So you're not going there to establish relationship with your bosses. Yeah. Uh, it's something specific. It's it's work. Yeah. But then, if your boss is excessively critical or unappreciative, uh, then and then his actions can tell that there is something between between me and my boss. Then as a Christian, we need to ask ourselves, how do I respond? But b- before we get there, it, you, are, you, are, you are making it seem like there's, we should be able to differentiate between a boss being excessively critical and hatred, and, and, and the boss hating. Like those, those, those are two different dynamics. Well, hatred can also have that component of right. being excessively critical. Yes. Now, excessive criticism or being critical really is is not so much the boss wants things to be done in a particular way. Yeah. It's where the boss really doesn't appreciate what you do. Okay. And it doesn't even give you a chance to prove yourself. Yeah. He's always micromanaging things simply because he doesn't trust you. Okay. So then you begin to see that the boss just has this strong dislike for you as it were. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I was saying. We need once we establish that, yeah. then we need to ask ourselves, how do I respond as a Christian? Yes. And the first thing I like us to know, or I like people to know in such a situation, is pray for wisdom. Mm. James one five tells us, if you lack wisdom, ask it from God, who generously gives it. Mm-hmm. We need to pray for wisdom. Now, wisdom is the right application of knowledge to a specific and given situation. Mm-hmm. So, when you're praying for wisdom, you, you have a situation at hand. And so, you're asking God to help you know how to respond to this given situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you pray for wisdom, the Lord is generous and you'll be able to give it to him. Mm-hmm. That's very clear. James tells us that. Mm-hmm. But then, 
apart from praying from from wisdom for wisdom what else can one do and uh, my mind right now is wrestling to the life of joseph mm -hmm. and uh, joseph is is a is a good example the first thing joseph did in potiphar's house mm -hmm. is that he did what was right mm -hmm. and Joseph was sure that he was right with God, but also right with his boss. Yeah. Such that uh, even whatever he was doing, it was always the right thing before God and before man. Mm -hmm. So even us, we need to ask ourselves, is what I'm doing right mm -hmm. before God and before my boss? Am I doing something that is honorable in the sight of God? Could you give like a practical, um, a, a practical example of that? Are you thinking along the lines of uh, maybe am I keeping time <laughs> yeah. at work? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For instance, yeah. am I am I am I am I keeping time? Yeah. Am I hardworking? Am I delivering on time? Yeah. When I've been given something to do, am I delivering? Am I producing the needed results or the desired results. Yeah. Am I the kind of person that when asked to do even extra tasks, I'm not always tying those duties to whether I'm getting paid or not. Mm -hmm. So when I say doing what was right, I'm basically saying, can, you, can someone look at your work and say, yeah, with... The, the responsibilities that you have here, mm -hmm. this is what to expect you to do. Mm -hmm. Or am I the person that is always late mm -hmm. and wants to leave early? Mm -hmm. Is always a person that wants to leave early for lunch and come late. Mm -hmm. Then there, the, the, there's, there a, problem, will be, yeah, there's a problem. Definitely, definitely. But we see that that wasn't the case with Joseph. Yeah. But also see that Joseph submitted to authority. Yeah. And First Peter chapter 2, verse 18 and 19 tells us that slaves must submit to their masters. Mm. Now, uh, as Christians, we need to submit to authority. Yeah. Now, we need to be clear, there is a difference between obedience mm -hmm. and submission. Mm -hmm. Now, obedience is simply complying or following a command or an order. Yeah. But Submission, the actual Greek rendering of the word submission is to arrange under. Okay. Now, submission requires, involves the will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when we are talking of submitting to authority, it requires your will or your faculty to, th to reason through mm -hmm. and therefore submit to a higher authority. Now, the word submit is as a military tone to it. Mm -hmm. Now, a junior in a military is required to arrange under yeah. when someone superior is there. Yeah. Now, Joseph submitted to authority. Yeah. Now, you see that he was hardworking in Potiphar's house. Mm -hmm. But you notice in Genesis 39, when Potiphar's wife tries to advance, us to, advance herself to Joseph, mm -hmm. Joseph disobeyed and mm -hmm. did not submit to what she was doing. Yeah, yes. To that authority. Yeah. Because that wasn't right. Yeah. So even as now, when you talk of submission, it's there is what is expected that needs to be done. Yeah. And if your boss is saying, do what is contrary to what is expected of you, then you don't need to submit because ultimately you are disobeying a higher authority which is God. So your submission is primarily with God and then secondarily with the exactly. With the boss. I wanted to bring it back to the, uh, the, the 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 thing that you've just brought up, yeah. the di like a difference between obedience and submission. Yeah. So would would this be an accurate rendering of mm -hmm. it that obedience is like a parent gives gives an, a, par a parent tells a tells a child mm -hmm. wash the dishes yeah. and and the child goes to wash the yeah. dishes. Th that would be obedience in yeah. that the, the orders yeah, are given. Have, yeah, you're being com you're complying to an order. Yeah. Whereas submission will be a, a the the adjustment of the will of the child mm -hmm. so that the 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 requirement of the parent is met even 
even even without the order being given so exactly it's given so, the first time yeah, wash dishes yeah. and all of a sudden the child says i think I, my parents would want me to wash dishes every day and so let me exactly so yeah. the parent would have told you then you learn to know why should i do the dishes i see yeah. Be- one because it is pleasing yeah. to your parents but ultimately to god yeah and because your parents are their higher authority yeah so you are submitting yeah so you find that in the child responding to the parent yeah you are doing two things obedient and submission yes but submission requires the will yeah yeah so, so submission is literally what you said yeah. it's, it's bringing bringing your will under, under. And, yes. and and carrying it out yes. not like a robot but like no, a, no, no. A, a human being made in the glory uh-huh. of god yes it's even that's why even when the bible talks about the wife submitting yeah. to the husband in a home yeah it's when now in a home there are two wheels now there's there's a wheel of the wife and the wheel of the husband yeah. And those two wheels crash. Yes. Then the wife said, "Look, I'm not blindly following. Following. Yeah. But I'm required in this case to to arrange under. Yes. So therefore, I will let things be. Yeah. Yeah. So we should think of our employers, uh, our employers in in a similar fashion. Yes, because yeah. those that, that's your immediate authority yeah. at work. Yeah. But ultimately, it's God. Yeah. So, even in the case of Joseph, you know, Joseph obeyed but did not give in to the will of Potiphar's wife yes because at that point it wasn't just you no know, complying with an order yeah it's something that required him to accept and be involved yes and therefore yeah. doing exactly that so even when we think of work yeah that's uh, that's that's a thing so unless your boss is telling you to do that which ultimately is disobedient to god yeah then you can clearly say no and then live with the consequences yeah. and we see also in the case of Joseph yeah. but also Joseph did not only submit to authority Joseph took initiative in his work mm. and uh, I'm imagining because we're told in Port Fazal there are other slaves yeah. but Joseph stands out yeah. there was a lot of initiative yeah. from Joseph's part and I think even when he goes to prison there's a lot of initiative from his part yeah. because I doubt whether the prison warder just put him in charge because maybe he was he was good looking and he spoke no 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 I think there was there was something about him yeah there was initiative in doing his work there's initiative in having a di- an outlook to everything that he was in yeah so when you bring it to work it, it must be the same yeah even if your boss doesn't like you yeah but at least there must be initiative from you. Yeah. You must be able to deliver. You must be able to 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 push your work beyond your normal sort of scope. Scope, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, give suggestions and uh, bring ways in doing things. That's that even if your your superiors don't may have a personal hatred, whatever the reason might be, yeah. but at least somebody they can recognize that there's a lot of initiative from this person. Yeah. And remember Joseph never really complained about his situation. At least I don't see that from the scriptures. Yeah. He could have, but at least we don't have it. Yeah. When you go to work, you must not complain about your work. That's very hard. Yeah. You must <laughs> no, you must that's not very com- hard. No, yeah. you must not yeah, it yeah. is, but you must not complain. Yeah. If you have to at least let not be within the four walls of, of your work. workplace <laughs> your workplace or your, your within the reach of your boss yeah do what your boss requires you to do yeah because remember when you work in most cases i think in most companies they'll give the outline what you need to do yeah but then sometimes i would say maybe extra work will be given to you as the boss demands or yes. sees sees fit yes so never complain about your work you you're bringing you're bringing a lot of information yeah. very fast but yeah. if i can try to process yeah. it a bit you if thinking of initiative okay, in yeah. terms of in, in in terms of the work that should be done yeah. and and everything you've spoken about it mm. it's almost as though the your immediate authority not not authority mm. uh your contract mm-hmm. your your contract b- in in terms of the work that yeah. you've been given outlines your duties yes right and so your initiative 
and and your hard working uh, your your level of hard working mm. is is fused in because you know what is required of mm-hmm. you when you're going in mm-hmm. and so because you signed the contract yeah. basically mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about non-slavery work yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but basically because you signed the yeah, contract yeah, yeah. you have made an you you have made an agreement before god mm. that i will be faithful to the terms yes. of the contract mm-hmm. and so your your feelings are almost secondary mm-hmm. because you've made you've made a commitment yes. to that and and it if you are not faithful to those terms mm. then you are pu- you are making your feeling you're putting your feelings over the contract and commitment that mm-hmm. you are that you've, you've you've signed to you've agreed to so th- 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 am, am i making yes, sense yes because the, because when when you were interviewed and given the job yeah. they say this is a job description yeah. this is what you expect you to do yeah. you looked at them hopefully yeah. and signed yeah. <laughs> and say okay from 8 to 17. Yeah. Uh this is what I would do. Yeah. If it means me skipping lunch yeah. to do this, I would do this. Yeah. So so the issue of what I feel. Yeah. It doesn't come in at that point because you've agreed. Yeah. If there's any time you should have brought in your feelings was before pending <laughs> your signature. Yeah. 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 So when we talk about initiative, yeah. It's initiative within what you've agreed, yes. but also going above, above and beyond. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. if for instance, if you know that if I went beyond what I'm required to do, and legitimately so, it will bring in more income or clientele. Yeah. What's wrong with doing that? Yeah. So, you see, the, most of us want to simply do the barest minimum. Yeah. If we're going to do extra work, we, we must be paid for yeah. it. Now, that's not taking initiative. Yeah. Initiative is doing things differently pro- or properly yeah. within the stipulated agreement yeah. but also thinking beyond yeah. or as we say outside the box yeah. what else can i do yeah. so that at the end of the day yeah. we maximize on the the, the the goals or the vision of this firm yes. let's uh, what example can i can i give for instance uh let, let me use a phone yeah once upon a time we simply had uh, if in the days of nokia 3310 yeah. <laughs> it was just a text message no camera nothing mm-hmm. it worked mm-hmm. we would call and receive phone calls yeah. but someone must have said surely there's a lot more we can do with a phone yeah that's taking initiative yeah. now we have a phone with a camera if we can do so many a watch yeah. I can put appointments. Someone went beyond yeah. the norm yeah. of just doing things uh, uh, the way we are accustomed to. Yeah. So that's initiative. Yeah. And I think when I looked at the example of Joseph, yeah. we are told there were other slaves in Potiphar's house, yeah. but he stood out. Yeah. We are told there were other prisoners, but he stood out. Yeah. So it wasn't just a man that would just, if it's in prison, just wakes up. Yeah. If it's clean or do your bed, I don't know if they had a bed. Yeah. You do your bed and just wait for orders. Yeah. He probably would make his bed, mop, yeah. maybe dust his walls. Yeah. It wasn't required of him, yeah. but at least he would go a step further. Yeah. That's what we say when, when we talk about work, taking initiative. So, so to, to, to bring it all together... Um, you, 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 you like doing this when we, <laughs> when, when we have these conversations. Uh, a question is asked and you, 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 you change the question. <laughs> you change the question. But in changing the questions like this, there's, there's, there's still an answer for the original question in it. We, we walked in here thinking, uh, what do I do if my boss hates me? But even before that question, ha- even before that question is yeah. had, uh, in trying to figure out is is my boss being overly critical of my work or is it actual hatred? There's a lot of that that has to do with am I being faithful yeah. to what is being required mm-hmm. of me? Um, and w- would w- would it be correct to say the faithfulness, the fa- being faithful in in the work that you're doing either opens doors elsewhere or sorts out the issues with the boss? Is that, would would that be a fair assessment? Well, it would be a fifty fifty situation. Yeah. 
you being faithful to your work may actually make your boss hate, to you, more. hate you more <laughs> or stop micromanaging things. I see. Yeah. It may actually make it may end your boss's trust uh, because you're faithful. Yeah. Now, I doubt any boss out there, even if they don't like your guts, yeah. if you deliver on time, yeah. you, are, you have a lot of initiative. You are hardworking whether they want to get rid of you. Yeah. They'll, they, they, they'll try to see how they can have you in their fame yeah. because you are meeting the objectives yeah, you bring value yes yeah. to your workplace yeah. even you go beyond yeah sometimes even maybe helping others to deliver yeah now i doubt whether anyone would want to get rid of yeah. such a person yeah imagine that the, in genesis we're told the the, the, the prison warder <laughs> did not concern himself yeah. with what was happening well, he said oh, i've got to chap joseph yeah. he'll sort things out yeah. potiphar did the same yeah now any boss mm. would want such a person. Yeah. Would yeah. want such a person. But the last thing Paul I'd like to say is remember at work, when you go for work, you've got something specific to do. Mm. Don't take things personal. Mm-hmm. It's if your boss hates you, it's because he hates you within the confines of the working environment. Mm-hmm. So don't take things personal. Mm-hmm. Try and relate to your boss within that framework or set of mind. Mm -hmm. That the only reason why I'm having these issues with my boss Mm -hmm. is because of work. And once you do that, it helps you that when you knock off, you are not now beginning to see how do I sort, thinking of how do I sort out my boss. Because you realize that, no, the only reason I have this tension is because of work. And therefore, you don't take things personal. Yeah. You meet him in the streets, you greet your boss. Yeah. If he has a problem, reach out to him. He has a funeral, reach out to him. A sickness, reach out to him. Yeah. Uh, if, or pray for him. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's the way we ought to look at things as Christians. Yeah. The, normally, most of us would have loved to hear the answer, quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> if your boss hates you, quit your yeah. job. If you want that answer... Yeah. Go to a previous episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, but the issue here must be: let me do an honest self-assessment yeah. before I begin to think of my boss. Yeah. And the advice is: whatever issues you might have, if it's work-related, let it always be communicated officially, yeah. so that there is some kind of documentation. Yeah. So that should you choose to leave. At least there must be some record. So yeah. that it's not he said, I said, no, yeah. no, no. There must be some kind of documentation. Yeah. So if it's always that uh, this hatred is as a result of maybe your boss thinks you don't follow orders, yeah. then plead with them wisely mm-hmm. that the next time you want me to do something, just put it in writing so that I'm able to follow. Yeah. That way there's uh, the his- it's possible for us to trace yeah. where we're coming from. Yeah. And, and remember, I began with prayer for wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. But also, Proverbs 15 tells us that a gentle answer is required in such situation. It doesn't, a gentle answer doesn't cause tempers flaring. Yeah. So if you realize that you have, your boss is upset, that's not the time to talk. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. And then maybe when things are calm, yeah. Then you can sit and reason with your boss. Yeah. But the, the reaction is always when he's on top of his voice, he also want to respond to prove a point. Yeah. No, pray for wisdom to be quiet. Yeah. And then know when to take it up with your boss. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was that was great, Pastor. Yeah. That was great. In in a future episode we really need to break down work. Just yeah. talk about work. Just yeah. talk about what work is, because I think that a lot of these issues stem from that yes. um yeah i hope i hope that first segment has been helpful uh we'll take a quick break here from one of our partners and then we'll come back and look at our book of the week
I love being on land. I feel much more at home. I feel like this is my habitat. Putting fins on, going into the sea, does not make you a fish. One artist invented water. He invented every liquid habitat and ecosystem that has ever existed. And he fills every inch with life, with death, and perpetual renewal. I'm Gordon Wilson, and this is Riot in the Dance, Water. And we are back. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been episode six of Coffee in the Library with Pastor Sibale. What is our book of the week, Pastor? Well, our book is Manly Dominion by Mark Chansky. And he says, in a passive people, in a passive people for bore world. Now what this book is really about is about men, Christian men, taking leadership and initiative in any, so in, in any given situation. Oh. And what Mark Chansky tries to bring out in this book, he's trying to show what God requires or demands on men. Yeah. And he gives different examples uh, uh, in life, and he more narrows down onto the scriptures. And he begins with Genesis 1. Yeah where he shows God creates Adam, puts Adam in a garden, and God gives Adam commands on what to do with the garden. Now, what Mark is really trying to show us is that men must not be passive. Mm -hmm. They must be active mm -hmm. and do something about any given situation. They must show leadership. This, there's also a component where it talks about work, mm -hmm. how that men must be hard working Men must find what work to do in order to provide not only for themselves, but for the family and the people around. Mm. Now, this book is one that I highly recommend for any man out there to read. Mm. And more so for Christian men. Mm. The first time I read this book was in somewhere around 2007. Mm. And uh, the first copy I had got lost because I was giving every man, every Christian <laughs> man. So probably it's still making its way around the world. It, one day to make, it, its, way make its way back to me. Yeah. This particular copy I have, you can see it was bought by my wife on her second anniversary. Mm. I talked a lot about this book, that when we were in South Africa, my wife saw the book mm. and bought it for me. Mm. So you just see how, how I value the, this particular yeah. copy was from my wife. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Manly Dominion. Manly Dominion by Mark Chansky. And how, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being easy, 10 being difficult, how, it's, how, how it's, easy is it to it's, read? It's, on, it's 5. Okay. 
and it, it's hard because Mark brings out truth that hits you. Not that yeah. it's difficult to follow, yeah. but just truth that makes you feel, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you won't go past that page until you just process what he say yeah. before, you go, <laughs> before you go before you go to the to the next the next the next page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, okay. Pastor. All right, um, we have come to the end of this episode of Coffee in the Library with Pastor Sivale. I hope you have benefited. I hope you've been blessed by uh, what we have spoken about. If you want to send questions in, once again, get in touch with us through the social media platforms that are in the description, wherever you are finding this. Uh, and uh, just a reminder, our episode number five was a special episode with Chisomo Wakumelo, who is dealing, talking about dealing with grief over the loss of a child. It's a special episode found only on the podcast, not even on YouTube. And so I urge you to reach, uh, check the, your, your, your podcast platforms and search for Biblical Christianity and you'll find Coffee in the Library episode 5. It is an amazing episode. I'm sure you'll not want to miss that. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.